Hey guys, Chris Fix here, and today I'm gonna to show you how to increase your steering angle in your car or your truck so you can make sharper, tighter turns. And the best part is, in some vehicles, this is free to do, and if not, it requires a small modification. It's easy enough, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. Unfortunately, some cars like my Mustang have a very poor turning radius, which makes it hard to turn on tight roads and in parking lots. So instead of making a quick and simple U-turn, you need to throw it in reverse and make a K-turn. And usually when you're turning around, you want to do it quickly. So let me show you how to increase your steering angle so you can make sharper turns. But before we do that, I want to get a baseline. I want to see what the stock steering angle is on this car. And in order to do that, I developed an angle finder made out of pieces of cardboard. So how this works is we have this top piece right here which the wheel sits on. And when the wheel turns, so does this. Now, for the bottom piece right here, I used a protractor with all the degree marks on it and a ruler to measure out every 10 degrees so I know it's accurate. So let's try this out and check our steering angle. And all you have to do is slide the angle finder under the center of the tire, line it up so that the line is right down the middle of the tire, and let it off the jack so it's on the ground. Now all we have to do is turn the steering wheel till it locks all the way to the right, just like that, and that's 30 degrees. And then we'll turn back the other way to the left until it locks and it looks like 25 degrees. So this is bone stock and we had 30 degrees when we turned to the right and then 25 degrees when we turned to the left. Now this is pretty cool. We got to really see what the steering angle is on a stock car. And just to give you another visual of what this means, I'm in the car and I'm turning the steering wheel all the way to the left until it locks. Now I'm going to go forward and keep it turned all the way so you could see our turning radius, which is the distance from the outside wheel to the center of the circle. In the Mustang, the turning radius is about 19 feet, which is pretty big. Now let's compare this to a compact car like a Ford Fiesta, which could turn a lot sharper. And this is how sharp I want the Mustang to turn. And with this overlay, you can see that the Mustang's turn is a whole car width wider than the Fiesta's turn. So we have some improvements to make. So let's get back to the house and get this car turning sharper. And to do that, we need to jack up the front. So chalk off the rear wheels so the car won't move. Get that jack under the front and jack the car up so you can comfortably work under it. Always use jack stands on both sides anytime you lift the car and let the car down onto the jack stands. Perfect. So with the car safely supported on jack stands and the rear wheels chalked off, you wanna come up to the car and give it a good shake. Make sure it doesn't budge and this isn't moving so now we could safely go under the front of the car. And what we're looking for is the steering rack, which is this right here, which runs across the front of the vehicle. On each side of the steering rack, there's a rubber boot and a tie rod. And how this works is when you turn the steering wheel, the steering rack pushes or pulls on the tie rod to move the wheel outwards or inwards. Now in many cars, inside the steering rack, right over by this boot, you have something called a steering rack limiter, which looks exactly like this. And this is just really a spacer to prevent the tire from turning any further inwards or outwards. So in order to get more steering angle, we just need to remove this spacer. Now, not every single car has a spacer. Not every single car has easy access like this, but it's easy enough to check and see if you do. And if you do, it's a nice and easy way to get a little bit more steering angle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the tire outwards and that's gonna expand our boot so it's easier to remove. To slide the boot off, the first thing we need to do is there's a vent tube that runs all the way across to the other side. All you have to do is just pull this out like that and we're just gonna remove this for now. Now with that vent tube out of the way, the clamp that holds this boot on is called an ear clamp. It's a single use clamp and I don't wanna replace it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just see if I could twist this and pull and if you want, you can get a flathead screwdriver under here to help you loosen this up. Just be careful not to damage the boot. You don't want to gouge it or put a hole in it. The boot is here to keep everything inside there, dirt and debris free. But I think we could just wiggle this off now. Just need to twist it and pull. There we go. And this is actually pretty cool. You can see the teeth down here on the power steering rack, which allows it to move back and forth. And then we have our rack limiter, and then we have our inner tie rod. So to get our rack limiter out, it's just a little C-shaped spacer, so it should just pop right out like this. I don't want to break it, so be careful. There we go. And that's all it takes to remove the rack limiter, and that's all it is. Now we could simply push this boot right back on and make sure you push this boot all the way in so it seats up against the power steering rack over here. Good, so we got one side done. That's all it takes to get the steering rack limiters out and get you some more steering angle. Now let's slide over to the other side and do the same exact thing. Turn the wheel outwards for more access and to remove the boot. And a little tip, when you remove the boot, 
If you see any fluid coming out of here, that means the seals in your steering rack are bad. If you have just a couple of drips coming out, that's not a big deal. Clean it up and just keep an eye on it. But if a lot of fluid comes out and your power steering is low, definitely have to consider replacing or rebuilding your power steering rack. So by doing this, you're also checking your power steering rack, which is pretty good. So we'll get the other rack limiter out. Good. Push the boot back on all the way so that it's sealed. Now we can put our vent tube back on and I'm going to push it in on the other side, just like that. And then you just peel this back a little bit and then push it in on this side as well. Good. All right, it is that simple to remove rack limiters and get yourself some more steering angle. But before we go and drop the car to the ground, we want to go over to the wheels and check for steering clearance. And this is a step you can't skip. There's a reason why they put rack limiters in the steering rack. And usually it's because this side of the wheel is going to make contact with the sway bar or with the control arm. And if we do make contact on any of the suspension pieces, don't worry, there's a solution. So let's turn the wheel and make sure we're not hitting anywhere. And good thing we checked because we're making contact with our sway bar. Let's turn the wheel the other way and make sure we don't have any issues in that direction. And in this direction there is plenty of room so there's nothing to worry about. And without removing the sway bar or doing any major modifications, we have three simple ways to get more clearance. And the first way is the most expensive and least reasonable way, and that is getting new wheels with a different offset. We want a more negative offset which pushes the wheels outwards. Now this is a really good option if you know you're going to get new wheels. Most of us aren't getting wheels just so we could get more steering angle, but that's okay because I have two other way more reasonable ways to get that extra clearance so let's go check that out now the first reasonable way is to shave down your rack limiters so maybe you want to make it half this size so what you could do is you could use a belt sander or something with sandpaper and shave it down that way or you could put it in a vise get your saw and shave it down that way now I want to keep my stock rack limiters because if I ever need to put them back, I'll have them. And if you want to do the same thing, another option is go to your local hardware store, plumbing supply store, wherever, get some PVC pipe and check it out. It fits perfect. So now you could cut your own rack limiters. Again, put it in the vise, measure out whatever size you think might work. I'm going to measure half the width of the stock rack limiter and just cut your piece. And then we just need to cut our little slots in here. And you'll have to make two of these, but this is ready to get installed right on our steering rack. And that's a really simple mod with some cheap PVC that you could do and get you a couple more degrees of angle. It takes a couple of seconds, totally worth it if that's the route you want to go. But what I want is a lot more angle than just a couple of degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be running a quality set of 25 millimeter hub centric wheel adapters. These are really good wheel adapters. And what this is going to do is it's going to move the wheel out enough to clear the suspension with no problems. Now I know there's a lot of questions, bad information, misconceptions about wheel spacers and wheel adapters like these. Like how thick can you run them? Are they safe for a daily driver? Will it wear out your bearing quicker? And to answer all those questions, I will be making a video all about wheel spacers and adapters. So stay tuned for that. But for now, know that a high quality hub centric wheel spacer or wheel adapter like this is perfectly safe to run and it's gonna give us the extra clearance we need so we could get a lot more angle so let's go get that wheel off so we could quickly install this and see how much angle we got by removing the rack limiters now before we go and add our spacer to the hub you want to grab a tube of anti-seize and put a little anti-seize on the rotor hat surface and spread it out so there's full coverage this will make sure that the back of the spacer doesn't bond to the rotor and if we need to remove this it'll come right off now the next thing we need to do is grab some medium strength thread locker and add some to each of the five wheel studs. That way when the spacer goes on and we tighten down the lug nuts and torque them to spec in a star pattern, those lug nuts won't loosen. And that's all it takes to install the spacers. You can see it adds a little bit extra room and that's going to pull the wheel outwards a little bit. Similar to what I was talking about before with the offset. If you have a more negative offset on your new wheels, you'll accomplish the same exact thing, but this is a lot cheaper. And I'll link wheel spacers and adapters in the description so you could easily find them. Now one thing to keep in mind, you could see the original studs are sticking out a little bit. You might have to cut them if your wheels don't have these cutouts but my wheels do have the cutouts, so we're good to go, and we could install our wheel. And now this is exactly like installing your wheel any other time. All you have to do is tighten down those lug nuts in a star pattern to your factory torque spec. So with the wheel torqued down, our spacer's installed properly. You can actually see the spacer right there. I also did the same thing on the other side. I installed the spacers. They're ready to go as well. Now for one final time, let's go back under the car and check for clearance issues. And the moment of truth, beautiful. 
So with the spacer on, you can see right back here we have plenty of room, so the tire does not rub at all. Now let's go check for clearance by turning the wheel the other way as well. And beautiful, there's plenty of clearance on the other side as well. So now we can slide the angle finder back under the wheel and lower the car down to check the new angle. Okay, let's turn the wheel all the way to the right until it's locked, and that's just under 40 degrees, so like 39 degrees or so. So we just increase the angle 9 degrees. Now let's go to the left, and it looks to be about 35-ish degrees, again about 10 degrees increase. All right, now I'm impressed. That's pretty good for removing some rack limiters and adding some spacers. We got about nine degrees, almost 10 degrees of angle just by doing that. Now what does that translate to on our turning radius? Let's go find out. Okay, so here's our stock turning radius with the rack limiters still installed, and that's pretty bad. And here is after removing the rack limiters, and what a difference. We are way inside that red circle, which is the stock turning circle. And just to put things into perspective, we're now turning just as sharp as a compact Ford Fiesta, whereas before we were a whole car width wider. How cool is that? Now that's what I call an improvement. And that's how you increase your steering angle so you can make sharper turns. Now not every vehicle is going to have rack limiters, but it's easy enough to check for these. And if you do have them, you won't be making K-turns anymore, you'll be making U-turns. Now I have a quick top tip for you. When you're making a sharp turn and you turn the steering wheel all the way to the lock, make sure you back off just a little bit because when it's all the way locked, you can hear the power steering pump moaning and that could actually cause damage to your power steering. So anytime you go make a turn, you can turn all the way, but once you hit the lock, let off just a little bit like that. And finally, if you want even more steering angle, stay tuned because I'm doing a video on how to install an angle kit. Now an angle kit is a cut and welded knuckle, so where the tie rod goes in, it's cut and welded closer, and they also cut and weld your control arms. So we're gonna be able to get some serious shopping cart angle with this kit, a lot more than 10 degrees. It's gonna be awesome, stay tuned for that. And as always, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, consider hitting that subscribe button.